In this video, I'll show you how you can build your own transmitter for remote controlling your projects. It's based on an Arduino and all the other components are very easy to get, so it's not at all expensive. And if you have a 3D printer, this should be a quite enjoyable build. I know there are other designs out there and um, probably they could be better for you, but I needed something that was exactly like this, so I went ahead and designed it myself. So without further ado, let me show you how to build it. Alright, so I went ahead and printed all the pieces for the remote. And as you can see, there are only four. This is the case, and you can see it's the most complicated part. It's got a lot of different features inside, and it's because it's going to house all of the electronic components. Then we've got this piece, and it is a cover for the case. And it goes on just like so. And it's mostly cosmetical, but it also serves the purpose of keeping all the wiring neatly tucked away. And then we've got two small pieces over here, and they are just for securing some of the electronic components inside. The next thing we'll do is to put some threaded inserts in these five holes here. And we're using these threaded inserts for M3 bolts. So now it's time for the electronics. And what you see here is all the components you are going to need. Let's start over here. This is a regular 9 volt battery. And we've also got a connector for the 9 volt battery. And then we've got this on off switch, which can be inserted directly into the case of the remote. And then we've got this one. It's an Arduino Nano. It's what we are going to connect everything to and it's also what we're going to program to make it all work. And then we've got an LCD screen. It's a display with two lines with 16 characters in each. And if we look on the back side, you can see there is this little extra module. And it's a module that let us connect via I2C instead of all the pins here. And it makes it possible to use a lot less wires. The next piece is this one and it's a radio transceiver, which means it can both send and receive radio signals. And it's of course this piece we're going to do all the radio communication with. And to accompany this one, we've got a dedicated power unit for the transceiver. And it's because the transceiver is a very sensitive device. So by adding this little extra piece, it gets its own 3.3 volt regulator and therefore a more stable operation. Next up, we got these joysticks. And it's of course these ones we're going to use for all the user input. And uh, they've also got a clicking function. So all in all, three different inputs in each of those. And we got, of course, two of them, one for each side. And then we've also got this piece. It's a rotary encoder. And we're going to use that with the LCD display to uh, navigate all the menus and settings and so forth. And the last piece here is, I will say, an optional piece. It's an MPU 6050, which basically is a gyroscope and an accelerometer combined. And this means it always knows at what angle or orientation it is at. And by implementing this in the remote, we can basically use the movement of the remote to control something with. And I think this is pretty cool. But if you don't want it, you don't have to put it in. And that's basically everything we're going to need. But as you can see, there are many of the components that have, you can see, small pin headers on. This actually makes it a little bit hard to solder together. So I'm going to remove most of the pin headers and I'm also going to do a little modification to the transceiver and the power unit. I'm going to remove this bit here. So instead of going together like this, they will go together in a much more compact fashion. Let's uh, go ahead and modify all the electronics. Mm -hmm. 
it's not necessarily easy to do, so if you don't want to do it with the joysticks and the rotary encoder, you definitely don't have to. But the um, transceiver and the power unit has to be modified, so you get this very slim profile. But now we are actually ready to move on to the wiring. So this is a diagram of how everything should be wired up. It's basically like this. We are taking the power from the 9V battery and running it through the switch directly to the Arduino. Then we are taking the 5V ground from the Arduino and distributing it directly to all the components. Other than that, we are taking all the logic pins from the components and wiring them to the analog and digital inputs of the Arduino. And that's pretty much it. I know it may seem a little bit complicated at first, but it's actually not so bad. It's just a lot of connections. Alright, this is all the wiring done and all the components installed. I started with the power distribution, you can see the red and the black lines and they are running at the lowest level. And afterwards I did all the logic with these thin wires here. It has become somewhat of a bird's nest here, but I don't really think there's any better way to do it when you're using separate components. Um, so now I think we are ready to pop in a battery. Uh, I have checked all the connections and they should be alright, but uh, I can of course not be 100% sure, but let's give it a try. Um, yes, let's do it. It pops right in here. And you might want to put a little bit of electrical tape in this um, compartment here just to make it a snug fit so it doesn't rattle when you uh, use the remote. Uh, but we can do that afterwards. Now let's try and turn it on. That's a very good sign. We have power in the Arduino and in the um, transceiver and also in the inertial measurement unit and also in the LCD screen. So very good. Of course there is no functionality because we haven't programmed anything yet. It's just the blink sketch running on the Arduino. But I think we can close this up now. Oh, and before you close it up, remember to set the contrast on the display here. I was just about to forget that. Alright, this looks about right. Now we can close it up. And now we've got a remote. It's now fully assembled, as you can see. We've got joysticks moving freely. We've got the rotary encoder moving very nice also. The LCD screen is flush with the cover. Uh, also, we've got um, the antenna here, which can be positioned like this when it has to be transported. Uh, also, we've got a USB interface here for programming the Arduino. And lastly, the power switch, and I noticed something very, very nice when I turned it on. Have a look at this. Can you see? Um, oh, maybe it's not so clear. Here, yeah. The light from the Arduino is shining through the plastic and it exposes the infill pattern, which is, I think it's cubic, but it looks triangular here. And that's just amazing. It looks so cool. I very happy about this. I couldn't have seen this coming, but what a nice little extra thing here. So we'll go with that. It's not a bug, it's a feature. And that's about it for this build. Uh, everything from here on will be programming it. And I think this video has become long enough already, so I'll be saving that for the next video. But overall, I think it turned out very, very nice even better than I could have hoped for. It's just really beautiful and I'm looking very much forward to programming it. So stay tuned for that. Um, thank you for joining me on this. It's been a pleasure and um, I'll see you in the next one.